Hi, my name is Yogya Bhatia and I'm a legal intern at Lexis and Company. Today, I'll be talking about right to strike. Article 19.1, subsection C, which reads as to form associations or unions and to strike peacefully. While as Article 19, subsection 4, reads as nothing in subclause C of the said clause shall affect the operation of any existing law in f- so far as it imposes or prevents the state from making any law imposing in the interest of the sovereignty and the integrity of India or public order or morality. Reasonable restrictions on the exercise of the right conferred by the said subclause and the strike undertaken under said subclause shall be reasonable and brought in notice to the employer. The Constitution of India has very well taken care of the rights of the citizens. Using this mother statute, various legislations are passed to protect the socio-economic, religious, political and cultural values of the society. But all of these rights come from the duties. With the more powerful the right is, more will be the underlying duties. Part 3 of the Indian Constitution embodies these powerful privileges called as fundamental rights. One of these fundamental rights, as enriched in Article 19.1 c, states that citizens of India have the right to freedom to form associations or unions. But in a large democratic society like India, with a huge number of economic transactions and well-developed industrial sectors, it is very much required to bring about policies for the welfare of the people, engaged as mentioned in Article 38 of the Constitution. When we talk about the corporate sector including private and the public companies industries, the people working there should be given the priority and their reasonable demand should be satisfied such as issues related to minimum wages, working hours, health and hygiene etc. Article 19.1c may be able to provide them the right to form associations and trade unions but it is not enough. Sometimes circumstances require the workers to go one step beyond and start strike by stopping the work to push the employer to get the demands fulfilled. The word strike means a cessation of a work or a concerted refusal to work based on a common understanding by the employees of any industry to get the demands fulfilled. Today, almost all the nations where socialist, whether socialist, democratic or capitalistic, provides right to strike to its workers. But it should be used as a weapon of last resort. If misused, it can undermine the industrial functioning and ultimate loss to the economy of the country. Right to strike is not a fundamental right in India. It was only after the enactment of the Industrial Dispute Act in 1947 that the right to strike was recognized in India as a statutory right. Section 22 uh, of the Act states that employees can go for the strike in case of breach of contract provided a prior notice is given to the employer within six weeks of such strike. It also includes em- uh, government employees. The said right is not freely given in the statute. There are certain conditions which only if satisfied can the workers go on strike. The right is an important weapon in the hands of workers for seeking redress and safeguarding their liberties. There was a general presumption that employer is always at a uh, at dominating position and there may be the chances of him imposing cruel terms and conditions of service on the employees. So the need was of a tool for collective bargaining. As the Supreme Court has said that good relations between employer and employee, collective bargaining are the essential objective of Industrial Dispute Act 1947. Article 19.1c gives the right to form associations and trade unions. If there is no right to strike, the right to form associations will be hollow. Then why such right is given at first place? The Indian, the Indian judiciary through the series of judicial decisions emphasize on the legality or illegality of strike, but didn't impose a ban on the right to strike. The Apex Court held that the membership of trade union, if sufficient, is able to bargain, but such bargaining power is highly reduced when no right to strike is given to the workers. International labor organization mandates that the right to organize in collective bargaining shall be given to the employees, although there are no excessive Express provision on the right to strike, but ILO committees of experts have highly regarded this right as indispensable and an integral part of the right to organize. India has implemented and promoted almost all the principles embodied in these two conventions except the right to strike. Universal Declaration of Human Rights 1948 provides for the protection of workers' interests. They have the right to form trade unions and associations, and the right to strike is equal of their constitutional privilege of to form associations. International Covenant of Economic, Social and Cultural Rights 1966 also provides for the recognition of the right to strike with the condition that it is in conformity with law of the member of states. The English judiciary has been very amenable towards the right to strike. They have recognized the said right as, judi- uh, as a justiciable one. Lord Denning held that strike is the last remedy and that it has emerged as an inherent right of the worker which forms the essence of collective bargaining. Even in the US, the National Labor Relations Act 1935 provides the right to strike to bargain for better wages and working conditions, health and hygiene, etc. However, no such recognition has been given to the aforesaid right in India. It's just a statutory right. Right to strike. The word strike comes from stricken to go, which means to quit, hit or impress in case of trade dispute. It is the most effective and final resort in the hands of workers to secure economic justice. This meaning of strike has undergone various changes around the world and most of the nations have given the right to strike to the workers. 
The right to strike is a statutory right in India guaranteed under Section 221A of the Industrial Dispute Act 1957. The section provides that in case of breach of contract in public utility service, the workers can go for strike with the prior notice to be given to the employer within six weeks of such strike. Thank you.